What if America couldn't find a new way to live, a way to heal, or a new direction? There are some common reasons to be afraid of American carnage. To use a memorable phrase from the President's inauguration speech, If the United States falls apart, it won't send aircraft carriers to fix the Straits of Hamas, or keep an eye on the South China Sea. Someone else, or no one, might have to do a rebalancing of world power that won't give us more freedom. In today's video, we will be talking about what it takes for America to become great once again, so be sure to leave a like and subscribe to our channel. However, this is hardly the most pressing issue for the rest of us, and neither is it diminishing of the United States' soft power. Hollywood could fade out, or more likely get lost in it. We would make it. It's possible that universities in the United States are the best in the world, but, fingers crossed, coronavirus vaccines will be deployed in Oxford and London instead of Harvard and Yale. No, the true reason why the problems facing the United States are so important is not anything that can be seen or touched. Instead, we can all claim ownership of the United States, because it is part of what you would call the free globe. We have a hand in it. It has to do with us. The imperfect experiment in self-government that the United States of America is seems to be vital to all of our futures because of the feelings that we have regarding it, both for and against. There are those who adore it while others despise it, but what's most significant is the fact that billions of people all around the world engage in both activities. There is hardly anyone who does not have an interest in the United States. We are going to participate. But it's also true that during the George Floyd era, hardly anybody can be considered a sincere fan, because it is so enormous, boisterous, innocent, and inspiring but also because it has a lot of faults that make us sick. We are concerned about the project. It does not take a trained therapist to understand that the degree in which we despise ourselves might have an impact on the responses we give. This is what I refer to as the agony of Netflix. We now regret how much we enjoyed the location and are determined to make amends for our mistake. We ought not to have such a soft spot for the Beach Boys or Obama. And we also ought not to have been so oblivious to the terrible things going on in the world, such as racism and persistent poverty. Joseph Joffe, a German academic and publisher, once wrote the following on why people dislike the United States of America. Seduction is worse than imposition. It makes you feel weak, and as a result, you detest yourself as well as the person who is corrupting you. Consequently, the question arises, what type of country is the United States of America? In point of fact, it simply is, rather than should be, would be, or was. What would you discover if you opened up the hood, as my children who are educated in the American system would say? According to the findings of a book that would be published the following month, the majority of Americans hold socialist beliefs. This statement gives the impression that the book is even crazier than it actually is. According to the typical definition of socialism, used by Republicans, the primary thesis of the book Evil Genesis, written by journalist Kurt Anderson, is that the majority of people living on Main Street are, in fact, socialists. They went to Wall Street to be subject to a greater degree of regulation. They want to impose a tax on affluence. They are likewise of the opinion that businesses ought to pay more. And in another significant shift that has occurred since the time of Ronald Reagan, the majority of Americans now believe that people are poor because of things they can't control. The tagline? Communism is American power plus electric power, brings fear and trepidation to the majority of people who live in the United States. Oh, I see. The previous one was something I made up. However, the depiction of destitution is shocking. It was conducted on a regular basis by the conservative American Enterprise Institute, and the results are even more stunning when juxtaposed with those from a Gallup poll in 2018, which revealed that an overwhelming majority of respondents wanted to see an improvement in the distribution of wealth. My impression has always been that the majority of Americans are completely unconcerned about inequality. I too hoped that would be the case, mostly due to the fact that this would make them more fascinating from the anthropological standpoint. But it's possible that I'm mistaken. Perhaps they are just as uninteresting as we are. An article that was published in 2018 by Paul Starr, a socialist at Princeton, stated that America now is not a centre-right country. Instead, he stated, the United States of America is a nation that has a centre-right economic elite. The country would revert to the way it was before the elite, who are called the evil geniuses in the novel written by Kurt Anderson, with the same name. Acquired control of it if you remove their power. Anderson does a wonderful job of writing about labour unions and the social solidarity of working people. 
both of which, unfortunately, reached their zenith in the early 1970s under the administration of President Nixon. The Nixon who improved on the FDR's New Deal rather than attempting to alter it, and who was content to spend money on various social projects during his presidency. Anderson describes Nixon as a brilliant stone-cold cynic who went with the liberal flow. Nixon was not a liberal himself, but Anderson describes him as such. The flow of water came to a halt. They were successful in seizing control of the nation, and the rest is past history. Anderson, Joe Biden, and a large number of other individuals on the American left believe that returning to a state of normalcy is the essential first step towards re-establishing social democracy. However, there is a problem with one issue. Let us assume this for the purpose of the argument. What are the Democrats' intentions regarding the United States of America? Is the plan to reintroduce Anderson something that they approve of? What will happen in the event that they don't? What if, to use a phrase coined by philosopher Richard Rorty, the new American left is exhausted? Rorty believed that the traditional social democratic American left collapsed during the late 60s under the weight of the inferno surrounding the Vietnam War, and that it was succeeded by a group that believed that the only way ahead was to totally deconstruct the system. The phrase, national pride is to countries what self-respect is to individuals. A necessary condition for self-improvement is found in the first sentence of Rorty's book, Archiving Our Country, which was published in 1998, and he claimed that the American left had lost its sense of national pride, which was true in 1998, and is still true today. To quote the great philosopher, a speculatorial, dissatisfied, laughing left use the country in a way that causes them to take a step back from it and, as they say, theorise it. The result is that they give cultural politics more weight than real politics and laugh at the concept that democratic institutions once again be converted to serve social justice, as the author of the article states. And you, what do you think? Will America ever be great again? Let us know in the comments down below. Leave a like if you enjoyed this video, and subscribe to our channel if you want to be the first to receive all of our newest uploads.